So now let's actually do an example of how this works. And we talked kind of theoretically. Um, I've got a stylized example that we'll go through and, and look at the mechanics of how a perpetual futures actually works. So let's start with an example that Bitcoin is worth uh, 10,000 USDC, which means $10,000. So an investor is going to initiate a long position by putting 1,000 USDC as collateral. So this is a levered bet. So if it was unlevered, then the investor would deposit 10,000 USDC. But they're only depositing 10%. So, so let's actually go through what happens if the price moves. So suppose the price goes up by 5%. So this means that uh, the Bitcoin goes from 10,000 to $10,500. Well, the profit is going to be 500. So let's think about this in terms of an investor that simply bought the Bitcoin. If you bought the Bitcoin, which means you're fully collateralized, you put $10,000 out, it goes to $10,500. Well, um, you made 5%. Now, let's look at the example with the futures, where we've got an investor puts up only $1,000, but actually makes the same amount of money, 500. So notice the rate of return here is 50%. Okay, and, and you can probably see where I'm going here. So if you're 100% collateralized, your return is 5%. The leverage that you've got in terms of putting only $1,000 down, but you're controlling 10,000 is 10 times. Okay, so you're controlling the value of 10,000 with only $1,000. So 10 times 5% is 50%. So you can see uh, this is how um, this works if the price moved uh, in your uh, direction. So I want to think about this in a different way. Um, and I've got some diagrams to show you. So we could think about uh, that this particular investor is taking a long position at 10,000. So effectively, they're committing to purchase or to buy at 10,000. So there's an obligation of 10,000. So you can think of this obligation to pay the 10,000 as a negative balance because according to the contract, uh, you've agreed to buy at 10,000. So the investor has already committed collateral of 1,000. So what's actually owed is 9,000. And this is sometimes called the short or owed uh, balance. On the other side, um, the investor is committed, and this is the other side of the ledger for this investor. The investor has committed uh, to buy one Bitcoin. So that's valuable. So you can think of the investor as having a positive balance of 10,000 at the current price. The collateralization ratio is 10,000 divided by 9,000 which is 111%, and that's very close to the uh, allowed leverage with the 10% uh, uh, margin. So in terms of the diagram here, we see this investor, we've got initial margin of 10%, we've got a maintenance margin of, of 5%, and the long balance is kind of the value of what you're going to get, and that is 10,000. The short balance, is what you owe, and that's the 10,000, but you've already paid 1,000. So you've got uh, basically the short balance of $9,000. And again, you can see how to calculate the margin here, and the margin is uh, 10,000 divided by 9,000 minus one, uh, which is 11%. And this is for a long position. Now let's consider uh, what happens if the price goes up by 10%. We previously did an example where the price goes up by 5%, but let's look at 10%. So 10% uh, 
the price of Bitcoin goes from 10,000 to 11,000. So now uh, the, the long balance is, uh, it, it's basically, again, the value of what you're going to get that's now 11,000. So it's gone up in value. But your short balance is the same because you're committed to buy at 10,000. You've already put 1,000 in. So the short balance is identical at 9,000. So again, your effective margin here is 11,000 divided by 9,000 minus one, 22.2%. So that's well above the uh, initial margin and the trader, uh, could actually withdraw some money here, close the position. If you want to close the position, you can close it. You're going to have a profit of a uh, thousand USDC, which is a return on investment of a hundred percent. And again, let's kind of go through that math that I kind of suggested. So we're putting up only 10%. So we've got a leverage of 10 times here. The price of the asset goes up by 10%. Our profit, we make $1,000, we invested $1,000. So the, the profit is effective, we've doubled uh, the amount. So we get that $1,000 of margin back plus the appreciation of 1,000. So the total position is 2,000 divided by 1,000. It's a 100% rate of return. Notice the relation. 10% appreciation times 10 times the margin is 100% rate of return. Okay, so this is just an example of a long position. So I also want to go through the mechanics of a short position or, or the, the long position where the price actually goes down. If you're short, this would be ideal, but unfortunately, you're long. So again, anytime you're long, you want the price to go up. Sometimes the price goes down. And this is an example of the price going down. So let's go through the mechanics. Um, let's say the price of Bitcoin goes down by 7.5%. So it goes from 10,000 to 9,250. So the value of what you're going to get is 9,250. The short balance again is unaffected. So we have an obligation of 10,000. We've already put in 1,000. So our short balance is 9,000. So calculating the margin here would be 9,250 divided by 9,000, subtract 1, 2.8%. This is below the 5% margin requirement. So what's going to happen here? The keeper is going to come in and they will basically, um, you know, essentially sell the Bitcoin, pay back uh, $9,000. Whatever is left over is 250 uh, USDC. That goes to the keeper. So again, this is different than traditional finance in that the keeper is collecting uh, the extra uh, margin. So this is an example of a long position uh, with different price moves with a liquidation uh, involved here. So um, the short position obviously works in a very similar way. So let's go through the short position also. Um, here, um, the investor is committed to sell a Bitcoin at 10,000. And that's a positive balance. And you're going to su supplement that with a margin deposit of 1,000. So the total positive balance is 11,000. And uh, the investor's negative balance is the obligation to buy that one Bitcoin at 10,000. So the collateralization ratio is 11,000 divided by 10,000, which is a margin of 10%. So uh, suppose that the underlying asset goes up by 5% in value. So if Bitcoin increases, by 5%, then we go to 10,500. And then the margin percentage becomes 11,000, which is unchanged, divided by the 10,500, which has changed. And when we calculate that margin, it is 4.76%. And this position 
will be subject to liquidation. Again, if you're short, you want the price to go down, but the price has gone up. And it hasn't gone up by that much, only 5%, but that 5% is going to trigger uh, the li liquidation. So, so again, uh, the difference here, uh, the net balance of 500 is the incentive for the, um, for the keeper to actually come in and, uh, and close that uh, position. So let's talk uh, beyond perpetual futures. Uh, there's interesting work um, that I reference um, that has talked about these concepts uh, in, in the past, but there's the possibility of also doing uh, perpetual options. Uh, this has been proposed, but not implemented yet. Perhaps by the time that you're watching uh, this course, we will have uh, perpetual uh, options. So again, there's a history of, uh, of this idea um, in the traditional uh, finance uh, literature, uh, but nobody's really implemented it in traditional centralized finance. It's interesting to me, in particular, that some of these ideas become possible uh, in decentralized finance that were not feasible in centralized uh, finance. Um, so let me uh, kind of summarize here. Um, perpetual futures, a great idea. It allows people, and again, it doesn't matter who you are, to, um, to participate in the appreciation or depreciation of crypto assets uh, without having to make a large investment. So uh, without having to, to buy the entire amount, you can use some leverage and participate in the upside or the downside. Um, this is something that's used for speculation. It can also be used for hedging. Okay, so, so futures are not just for speculation. It might be that you want to protect the value of your position over uh, the short term. So you, you might have a portfolio of cryptos, but you think in the short term, there is going to be uh, some price depreciation. But you, you don't want to sell your portfolio. So the easy way to deal with that is to actually do a short position in the futures. And then if the price actually goes down, well, you protect it because you're profiting on the perpetuals and uh, the value of your underlying portfolio is going down. That's true, but that's offset by the gains on your short position. So it provides a, a very natural hedge. Of course, this works both ways. So if you're wrong and you take that short position, well, you're going to lose money on your futures, but your portfolio is actually going up in value. So again, it's a hedge. The hedge is two-sided in that you're protecting your downside, but you're also eliminating uh, the upside if you get it wrong. And that is what a futures hedge actually does. So again, our, our table of um, the solutions that um, that DYDX offers, uh, they're very substantial. This is a decentralized uh, protocol. As I mentioned, they've got their now their uh, decentralized governance token, uh, capital DYDX. Uh, um, this is open to anybody. If you're trading uh, derivatives in centralized uh, finance, you need to be qualified to actually do that. So you have to go through the process at your broker uh, to become qualified. Uh, this is open uh, to anybody. We've got free flash loans that are available. So arbitrage is now uh, democratized. So anybody uh, can do it, not just hedge funds or high net worth uh, investors. This is all um, algorithmically uh, done. We've got optimized interest rates, free flash loans. So this is much more efficient than uh, centralized uh, finance. And of course, We've got interoperability, and again, everything is open. It's kind of obvious that everything is open. Think of the keepers. They see everything. They see when that collateralization ratio 
drops below 5% and then they act. So this is something that is open for everybody. Whereas in traditional finance, in terms of what happens in uh, a traditional, for example, futures or options market, we get minimal uh, information. And in terms of the actual traders, well, maybe the exchange knows the traders, but anybody from the outside, very difficult to tell.